Joe Pugh for Boxing UK in association with Supreme CBD. Once again, joined by Mr. Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury, how are you, Tommy? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. Just uh, finished uh, a fun, exciting press conference for the official announcement of Tyson Fury versus Dillian White. Unfortunately, Dillian wasn't in attendance. What did you make of that, first of all? Um, you know, like I've said in all these interviews, you know, Dillian White is not needed in this build-up. You know, out of the 100,000 people who's coming here on, uh, on April 23rd, no one's coming to see Dillian White. No one's interested in Dillian White. It's all about Tyson Fury. So the 100,000 people that are coming, they're all coming to see Tyson, so it doesn't really matter if he's here or not. Do you think it's unprofessional of Dillian, though, to not to turn up? 100%, you know, 100%. You know, he's, he should be grateful to Tyson. You know, he's never going to see his kind of money again. It's going to change his life. It's going to change his family's life. And he's that disrespectful that he doesn't want to show up to a press conference. I mean, I think it's ludicrous, but is he needed? No. Do we care? No. And how big do you think this fight is going to be on April 23rd, obviously, St George's Day? Again, St George's Day, and it's going to be one of the biggest fights in history. Well, it's definitely going to be, um, you know, breaking a record in attendance. It's going to be the biggest event in UK history. But um, it's going to be one of the greatest fights, I think, if Dillian White tries, you know. Um, again, he's not needed. You know, Dillian White is just a, a mandatory in the opposite corner, and that's all he is. Would you like to potentially get out on the undercard of such a big event like this? Yeah, definitely. I mean, me and Frank and the team are going over it now. Um, just try and pencil it all in and get it all confirmed up. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. What would you say the chances are of you appearing on the undercard? Yeah, I'd say they're very, very high chances. Um, you know, I'm in shape. I'm ready to go. You know, I'm healed up. Um, and, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, um, you was meant to be fighting Jake Paul. That's f fell through. Do you think we can see it this year? Yeah, definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said before, Jake Paul's busy promoting this uh, Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor fight, which is all good, you know, big, big fight in women's boxing. And then basically he's trying to dictate terms when he's just busy. You know, that's the top end of, it. That's the, top end of the bottom of it. But if he thinks I'm going to wait around for him and put my career on hold, he's got nothing coming. You know, I'm here looking to get out on the undercard and um, get a good knockout win and make my career real on and on and on. You know, that J Jake Paul knows how big this fight is. You know, my brother's about to do 100,000 at Wembley. You know, he's not a daft man. You know, I'm going to leave it at that. He knows where the fight is and, you know, it is what it is. That's all I'm going to leave it. But for the meantime, I'm going to get on with my career. And uh, your father, John, just had a little uh, little crosswords of with uh, Carl Frampton over, because he obviously thinks that Jake Paul potentially would beat you. What did you think of that little argument just there? And that's coming from a former world champion who clearly knows nothing about the sport. Um, you know, I, I used to look up to Carl Frampton and watch uh, a lot of his fights, put it this way. And for him to have that verdict on me versus Jake Paul, you know, it's, it's ludicrous, I think. So he's, he's a guy I've not really got time for anymore. Do you get disheartened when you hear professionals like Carl Frampton maybe favouring someone like Jake Paul over yourself? Not really, because I don't care what anybody thinks. You know, I'm not interested. Um, you know, it is what it is. I know what I can do. I know who I can beat. And that's it. I don't, I'm not interested in what Carl Frampton thinks. I just thought, you know, a fellow countryman would, would get behind me, you know, in that fight. But clearly not. I mean, you know, jealousy, jealousy is a very big thing. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what I've done. Um, but, you know, that's it. And... I'm sure he's going to go on and say it's just my opinion, but, you know, really? Coming for an next world champion? Okay. And finally, Tommy, what can we expect on a personal level for you for 2022? Just being active. You know, I've changed my full lifestyle. Um, I've, I've, I've put myself in a way where I'm fit all year round, ready to take any fight. Um, yeah, and I'm in shape. I'm, I'm in shape and ready to go, so I want to get a good few fights in this year and just be active. Something that I've not been in my career before. I just want to be very active. Tommy Fury, thank you very much for speaking to Boxing UK. Hopefully you switch again soon. Cheers, mate.